wondering if you're like me in the thought of a seven day wellness retreat where I'm eating tofu and have taken a vow of silence and I'm doing yoga five times a day and napping the rest of the time is completely boring. If that you are like me and you don't have to be, there are plenty of wellness retreats for those of you who want those seven days of complete silence. Stick around because in this one we're going to be talking about wellness retreats that are also a little on the adventurous side for those of us who are not going to be able to sit still for seven days straight. You might be thinking, I don't want anything to do with the wellness retreat. And I will push back a little bit. We all live really busy lives where it is nice to have time to go reset, maybe find some traditional medicine that's going to help us with our gut health or our hormonal health, or help us get strong and lean in a way that we wouldn't normally get to in our day-to-day -day life. And if you are a fan of the channel, then you know I talk a lot about how travel can get us out of our habits that we're already in and teach us some new things. And I do think that it's really important to think about having some downtime, having some vacation, as opposed to travel when we're on a vacation. And being able to look at food, wellness, health as a whole. I just don't personally think that I could handle the entire time. I want the personal growth that comes from having the wellness treat, retreat, but I also want the growth that comes from learning about the culture and doing the different things. When we are faced with people who aren't like us, who eat different things, have different types of movement and have different types of living quarters and ways that they shop and ways that they connect and interact with one another, it ripens us for learning so much about who we are and the personal growth that you'll get from these types of retreats that have both wellness and a cultural and adventurous mix will really help you to buoyant forward in a way that you would not have otherwise. Another reason to mix the two is to have a really authentic experiences, both on the wellness side and on the culture connection side. When you are at a wellness retreat, you are normally eating really wholesome, authentic foods that are sourced from that location where you are. And they're going to be culturally relevant and really good for you. But on the other side of that, you're also going to have where did it come from? How did you get to this food? Where you're going to be learning about, you know, how they grow it, how they harvest it, where the recipes come from, the history of the different cultures that came together to make this a thing in this particular location. And it's a much deeper and authentic experience than it would be necessarily saying, okay, I'm going to go to a wellness retreat in Tucson, Arizona, but all they serve is this one type of food that has nothing to do with Arizona and we're actually just going to lay by the pool or we're going to do yoga here, but we're not getting into the culture of that place. And the same if you go to a wellness retreat in India or Spain or Italy or in the Caribbean, any place that you go, making sure that you're having those authentic experiences is one of the main reasons of going is yes, I could eat really, I hate to say bland, but in my mind, bland foods that are really great for me. And I could do yoga five times a day at home. I want to go and learn something about the places that I'm going to be. Another reason is that there is going to be a level of exclusivity in these retreats that you're not normally going to get. Because you're in this kind of closed environment, you're going to be working with the native culture who has built this spa, has, is cooking your food, is leading your groups, is leading you on these excursions. And they're not going to be excursions that are full of other tourists that are coming into this area for the touristy things. They're going to be really exclusive, really private, getting really connected to the people who live there and what they think is really relevant and important 
to both your wellness journey and for you to know because they're proud of where they come from and they want you to learn the history and background of it. One of the things that's going to be really important for you before you go on the one of these wellness retreats is to think about your goals and desires. As we kind of talked about in our past video and the guide that I have for y'all on thinking through goal setting, it is important for you to know where you want to go before you go there. Say that your goal is truly to learn more about gardening and how you can sustain a different healthy lifestyle through some gardening efforts. You might want to find a wellness retreat that has a garden on site that you can work in and work with the gardeners who are tending to that so that you can learn how they're doing it and then learn how to take what you're growing and make something really healthy and delicious out of it. If you don't do that and you end up in a whole other retreat that may be wonderful, you could find yourself not really loving that experience. It is important to start with your desires and goals and then move into where do you want to go that is going to help complement that. Other parts of this that you'll want to take into consideration are the excursions that they offer to you or the tours, the food that they're offering, and then the accommodations that they're offering. You might want something that is really low key, that's a cot in a room, or you might want something that isn't, that's a lot more luxury. And there's a time and place for both of those things, but know that before you go, it is often that many wellness retreats will have a name on social media or with influencers or with famous people. And we don't really know for sure what's going on there. We just have heard of it. So we want to go there also. And that's wonderful. But think about these things before you go there. Are they going to be doing things that are going to serve you in your wellness journey and in your connection to culture journey? Or is the connection to culture that you want to be part of the influencers? That is a valid goal. So think about that and those pieces before you get started. And as I said before, you can always use our guide and I'll have the link below to help you think through the locations, how you wanna feel when you're done traveling, what kind of traveler you are, what kind of excursions you wanna do so that you're totally ready before you start looking. There are a few places that come to mind when we think about these immersive wellness experiences. One is in Japan. In Kyoto, you might have meditations led by Buddhist monks, traditional tea ceremonies, um, forest bathing and nature bathing, things that you can only find in that culture that has cultivated this certain specific type of wellness over decades and centuries. Another place that's high on the list right now for wellness retreats is Tuscany, Italy. You might find that you're staying in farmhouses or villas that have been renovated for this purpose and doing yoga in vineyards or olive groves. And you might have the really amazing experience of being part of that true farm to table experience where you're out in the vineyards or out in the groves or out in the farmlands where you are taking what you're picking what you are going to actually go back to your retreat and cook. So it is really a full 360 experience where you're in this area, but you're also learning about it and learning things that you can take back with you. Another place that you might want to look at is Kerala, India, with their Ayurvedic traditions and making sure that they are treating the whole person from gut to brain to every other part of you, you will be immersed in this beautiful tradition. In this lush tropical setting, you might take boat tours to spice farms where you'll get to see where the spices are grown, how and why they're important to the culture, and then bring that back to how that's helpful for you in wellness and in culture and in food. So again, that full circle experience. Since wellness travel is on the rise, it could be a little difficult to make sure that you are finding truly authentic experiences. Some tips would be to make sure that you ask them about their hiring practices and are they hiring people from the community 
that are going to be sharing their cultural wisdom with you and looking at pictures online and reviews to sh be sure that it is all actually authentic and that they have the expertise that they say they're going to have. You'll also want to see if they can customize for you or if it's a one size fits all. If it is a really high quality wellness retreat, then they're going to customize for who you are, where you are in life, what your unique situation is. And it's really important that you look for that if that is the level of care that you want when you go on your wellness retreat. And finally, looking for sustainable practices. Are they harvesting and then using what they're harvesting? Are they bringing in people from the city where they are or the village where they are to help work and keeping the funds inside of the village so that they're not going back out to a corporation. Looking for those sustainable types of practices will help ensure that your wellness vacation is, all, is also bringing wellness into the place where you're going. Be sure to check out our blog post on this. We also have some really great recommendations for places to go that would be really interesting for you to check out. And if you have any other questions or would love some help booking one of these wellness and culture retreats, feel free to book a discovery call with me. I'd love to chat with you and help you learn more about this amazing way of traveling.